All right, guys, we're going to go from the Lee 1010 to the Lee 1010 Plasma add-on. You can see we have some lifters to lift the travel clearance up a little bit. We have a floating Z head with a probe switch. As soon as it lifts, it triggers the probe. We also are going to be moving our Z axis limit switch up to here to give us 80 millimeters of travel. And we're adding a lot of these little rubber hard stops in multiple locations so that you don't cut through the pan. You can't go any further. This is going to be an awesome addition going from the CNC wood routing into a metal cutting monster. Let's get started. There's a few items we need to pre-make um, as we go into this build. So I'm going to go ahead and go through those now just show you real quickly. These are the hard stops, the rubber hard stops, and they come with the screws, which just insert through the top here. You got to kind of push them in. Usually I just leave this in there and then just kind of hold it like that while I put the T-nut on the back. So when it's done, you just loosely put the T-nut on there because when you spin it, it locks into the V-slot. But when it's done, it should look like that. So I recommend going through and just getting all these ready to go. And again, I'll say it, just like a couple turns, you actually want to leave that loose or it won't allow it to spin and lock into the V-slot. All right, so this is going to be the limit switch for the plasma probe. We're going to go ahead and take these little plastic cutting screws and attach the top of the limit switch plate to the limit switch itself. These screws will self-thread in there, so let's go ahead and do that now. You may have to work them back and forth to get them to go, but they'll go. It's a little easier if you get both of them started. I'm going to go ahead and leave this one loose just for a second because I need to slide this spacer in here between the two and kind of line that up. Just for a uh, temporary, I'm going to slide this screw in there to hold it in place and then I'll screw this down. All right, that looks good. That's all we're going to do for this right now. We'll get back to it a little bit later as we go to attach it to the actual plate that holds it in place. So let's move all these parts somewhere safe. Matter of fact, I'm probably just gonna leave that screw in there, put this on, and put this T-nut on the back loosely, just to hold everything in place. Let's go ahead and set that to the side and move on. All right, so the floating head comes with four wheel kits. Go ahead and assemble one, and then we'll go ahead and assemble the rest of them. So to assemble the wheel kit, just take the wheel shell, one of the bearings, press it in place like this. Get one of your precision shims, drop that in there, and then the other bearing sandwiches it in place, just like that. Don't worry about the other precision shim or the lock nut right now. We'll get to that later, but keep them. So we'll go through now and we'll assemble the rest of these. All right, so that looks good. I went ahead and put all the precision shims and lock nuts in a bag for safekeeping for a later step. Let's move on. Okay, so we have four of our wheel kits. We have two of our three hole joining plates, six of our drop in T nuts. We have eight precision shims, two M5 by 10 millimeter screws and four M5 by 20 millimeter screws. All right, so let's get started. We'll grab one of our wheel kits, one of our 20 millimeter screws We'll put the screw through the wheel, a couple of our precision shims. And then one of our joining plates. And then one of our T-nuts. Now, when you put these T-nuts on, just hand tighten them. And the main objective here is to make sure that they're facing vertical because these have to slide into the slot. That looks good. We'll do the same thing on the next wheel. Two precision shims. And then we're gonna put this one on the bottom hole, like you see here, another T-nut. And again, just hand tighten, but just make sure that it's vertical like that. We can we'll come back and tighten these up later. Now we wanna, for the middle hole, we wanna get one of our 10 millimeter screws, slide that in, and then a drop in T-nut. 
and that looks good. That's what we're after. We'll do the same thing again for this one. One thing I want to mention is on this middle Tina, we're just going to do a couple threads here and leave it loose because when we mount this into the V slot, we want it to be uh, able to spin once and lock underneath the rail. So that looks good. We've got both of our loading head wheel assemblies. We'll move on to the next step. Okay, so for this step, we're gonna install the torch holder to the floating head. You're gonna need two 20 millimeter screws, the thumb screw, the 80 millimeter V-slot, and the torch holding plate. First thing we're gonna do is take our thumb screw and just get that started. The holes on the V-slot are tapped on both sides. So we're gonna go ahead and take our 20 millimeter screws, push those through, and we'll screw this right to the bottom, just like you see here. That started it by hand. All right, that looks great. Let's move on to the next step. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and remove all the things we're not gonna need. We'll get rid of the dust shoe and we'll get rid of the vacuum hose. So let's go ahead and do that now. Remove the dust shoe. Then we're going to go in and remove our router, but I think I'm going to take this bit out first. Okay, let's go ahead and remove the router. Now let's go through and we'll remove our router mount. If you have an LED ring, make sure to unplug it. So what we're going to be doing is moving our Z-axis limit switch up from the bottom here to this top wheel. And we're gonna shorten up the slot cover and we'll pull the excess wire through here. On this step, we're gonna go through, we're gonna move the limit switch out of here and also get rid of our LED ring wiring. I'm gonna put the LED ring towards the back right now. We're not gonna use that. First thing we need to do is jog our Z axis up until the plate the bottom plate is touching under here, so I'm just going to use my thumb and jog this up. I bottomed out right there, so we're good there. All right, so let's take our Z-axis limit, and we're going to, don't worry about this XX wire right now. Just going to put it in like this, and you want to get it started so it starts to snug up a little bit, but you still want to be able to move it now. Just move it up. As soon as it clicks, tighten in place. All right, so we're at the back of the machine now. We're just gonna take my LED ring wire and wrap this up. Put a little twist tie on it to get it out of the way for now. All right, that looks good. Now the rest of this wire that's coming from our new limit switch position, we're gonna find down here, locate the wire that is that wire by pulling, and you can see I got it right here. We're just gonna pull it through. Gonna leave a little bit because we're gonna run it into this track here like this, and we'll cover this up with a slot cover. We'll take our three inch slot cover and put that over top of the wire here. Got my three inch slot cover here. Gonna pop it in. That looks good. We'll take the rest of this wire, make a loop, and shove it into the drag chain here. Okay, that looks good. Everything's tucked away. Let's move on. All right, on this step, we're gonna go ahead and remove the spoiler board. So I got my Phillips head drill, and we're just gonna go ahead and go up underneath and unscrew all the brackets. Okay, so we've unscrewed the spoiler board, unscrewed all the screws under the brackets here. So we can go ahead and take that off now and move it to the side. Here's what it looks like without the spoiler board. And on this step, we're gonna go through and we're gonna disconnect the frame from the rest of the machine so we can lift it up using our lifting plates. Okay, so to remove the machine from the frame, we're gonna go ahead and remove these cast corners that are underneath here. And they're on all four sides, so go ahead and remove these and let's set them to the side. Okay, so let's do this for the other three sides. 
All right, so we have all the cast corners off. At this point, the machine is free from the frame. We're gonna go through now, take a Phillips head screwdriver and go through and get rid of all of these end caps. So go ahead and take those off. All right, on this step, we need to remove this screw. So first thing I'm gonna do is just take and snip off this zip tie that's on here, kind of holding it to the unit. And the whole uh, objective is to get the wiring out of the way so we can get to this little screw on the bottom, which I'll show you here in a minute, down here. So we wanna remove that screw next. Okay, so I've moved the wires out of the way. Just be careful not to nick them. And then just take your Allen key, hold your finger on the, on the T-nut, and you should be able to remove this. At this point, you have access to take this off. So let's go ahead and remove that now. All right, that looks good. Okay, so I spun the machine around so we could see it a little bit better while we're working on it. We're gonna remove this stepper motor and this stepper motor. And we're gonna do that by removing the um, one side of the flexible coupling. We have a clamp screw here. And on the back side of that, we have a smaller set screw right here. The first thing we should do is go ahead and just, if you have zip ties holding on to your plug, go ahead and snip those off. Go ahead and unplug this motor. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. All right, that looks good. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just loosen up the set screws on the stepper motor side. So go ahead and break those free and just let it hang out there. That should be good. We'll do the same thing to the other motor. All right, just the stepper motor side. That looks good. All right, on this next step, we're gonna break free the two screws holding the stepper motor in place and we'll remove the stepper motor on this side as well as the other side. Should slide out pretty easy. Let's set that to the side. Go ahead and do this side. All right guys, so we wanna make sure that we remove these two screws. These are the two screws we're going to mount the plate back onto with, and then the remaining holes will be where your motor actually mounts to, which are in these outside threaded holes here. And I just wanna say, make sure that you use this particular plate on the back right hand side where your cable chain is because you need the plate with a hole in it to in order to mount the cable chain onto it once it's done. All right so we're going to go ahead and add our riser plates. They're going to sit on here just like this. So we're going to add them to the top first. In order to do that we need to break these screws loose. If you strip a screw out like I've done here you can use a T20 torque type star bit. Put it in the, on the head of the screw there and just hammer it in place. A couple taps, get it on there. And that will allow you to pull that screw right out. Let's go ahead and do that now. And we'll screw that in place. Go ahead and break these screws loose. Okay, that looks really good with both our riser plates on here. Let's go ahead and spin the machine around and we'll do the same thing to the front. We'll add the front riser plate. All right, we have the machine flipped around. We're gonna go ahead and remove these screws on the end plates here and we'll be installing our riser plates. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and remove these top and bottom screw here above the lead screw. And we're gonna reuse them when we install our riser plate on the top and bottom. And then we're gonna use two M5 by eight millimeter screws to mount this riser plate. All right, that looks good. Let's move on to the next one. All right, that looks good. At this point we have all four M plates on. Let's move on to the next step. All right, on this step, we're gonna put the, the whole machine frame up on blocks. We're gonna kind of work one side at a time. So you wanna go ahead and grab a two by four and just lift this up, slide it underneath of your carriage plate here. Doesn't matter if it tilts like that a little bit, should be all right. 
you have a little bit of freedom to move this around. So let's grab the T-nuts. All right, so I have four T-nuts. We're gonna do two on the top. On the first two, let's just slide them all the way out, out of the way. And we'll kind of bring those in later for these two holes. But these, we'll put, just leave about a quarter inch or so, six millimeters from the edge of the V-slot to the edge of the T-nut. That'll get you close to the alignment of the holes. That looks good, and we'll go ahead and do the back ones as well. Okay, we're on the back side, so again, just putting our T-nuts on. The first two, top and bottom rail, we're pushing out of the way a little bit. We'll bring those in later. And the next two, again, we're just going to leave like about a quarter inch off of the edge here, and that'll line us up when we drop this back down. All right, I'm going to spin the machine back around, and we'll continue. Okay, so I've got some eight millimeter screws here. We're gonna go ahead and take our two by four, lift it up a little bit and just turn it sideways like this. Kind of line things up here. Drop this back down. Let it sit on here. And again, it doesn't matter if it, it goes up and hits that because you're gonna be working on this end anyway. So the first thing we're gonna do is take the ball driver, lift this end up, take your ball driver and Align those T-nuts in the back here with the holes. Go ahead and get one of the screws. Let's start with this one. And I'm just gonna put it, I'm gonna snug it and then I'm gonna back it off because we wanna keep these loose. Do the same thing with this one. Good. And then we're gonna, we're gonna leave these where they are right now. We're just gonna keep these two here. And we're gonna spin this machine around and do the same thing we did here on the back side. All right, so here we are on the back side of the machine. Again, we're just gonna lift this up, line up those T-nuts. All right, that's good. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, so we're gonna move the block to this side and do the same thing we did on this last step, installing these riser plates to the frame. All right, remember that the two by four needs to be on its end this way, like you see here underneath the plate there. And then that'll allow us enough room to slide those T-nuts on. So let's go ahead and do that now. Four T-nuts on each one. The first set, remember, keep them out here like we did over there. And we'll put those on later. And then these, again, we're going to leave, you know, quarter inch off the end or so. And that'll help us with alignment. Okay, all the T-nuts are in place. We're going to go ahead and flip the 2 by 4 down like this. And we'll go ahead and lift this up and install the first two T-nuts on this side. And we'll also do the same thing on the back side. Again, we're going to lift this up and align these T-nuts. Make sure they're lined up. So you can get to them. That looks good. And then, again, snug them up and then back them off. Just like that. Looks good. We'll spin the machine around and we'll do the other side. All right, on the back side, bring these up and line them up. Line them up, back them off. At this point, we can go ahead and remove the two by four. All right, on this step, we're gonna slide these T-nuts over and get them lined up with the holes underneath the plates here and here as well. So you need to push them in and you know, get them where they're going. This is a magnetic tip, so it makes it a little difficult, but once you get them close to the hole there, you should be able to just grab them like this. Get that lined up like that. Go ahead and put the two screws in there. And again, we're just going to snug them and back them off. Keep them loose. Good. We'll do the same thing on the other side. I will say, when you're doing an alignment like this, when you're trying to line something up like this, it's always best to turn the screw backwards so you don't cross thread it until you know you're actually lined up with it. Once you get it and you know you're set, you should be able to run it forward then. And also remember these are loose, so you may have to pick it up while you're trying to get it to uh, line up with the T-nut. That looks good. We're gonna go ahead and spin the machine around and we'll do the back. So again, repeating the same process, we'll pull these two T-nuts in, pull those two T-nuts over, and we'll go ahead and put the screws in. All 
All right, that looks good. Let's move on to the next step. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and hook the drag chain back up. So when we took it off, we had the L bracket, the spacer, and the screw, as well as an M3 screw and an M3 T-nut. And we're gonna go ahead and hook that back up now. All right, on this step, we're gonna be installing our spacer bracket to hold the cable chain in place. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Remember, this is loose, so we can lift this whole assembly up and get it aligned where it needs to be. Normally, if I had a table here and this was setting on the table, it would be flush with the bottom of the V-slot here. But since it's not, I'm just gonna go ahead and lift this up. I still have this loose. Go ahead and lift this up and also uh, make sure I'm flush to the corner here. And then I'm flush on the bottom here. And then I'm, tighten, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these screws in place. Now, once we get this on a table, we can readjust this if we need to, but that's actually pretty good right there. Then we'll come back in here, tighten this down, this little bracket here. And we'll use this to hold our cable chain for the wires. That looks good there. Now, you, you want to take notice that this hole here is out further than this hole where the screw is going in. So just make sure you have the L bracket on there right. All right, that looks good. Let's move on to the next step. All right, at this point, we're going to go ahead and install the cable chain. And we're just going to reattach it to the hole here. Let me move these wires around to this side. And we can come back and make these wires look nicer. All right, so we're going to be installing it to this hole here on the top. I don't know if you can see that, but we're going to be installing it to this top hole into the into the uh, bracket here. So just go ahead and get your M3 screw, slide that in there. And that's why you really have to have that L bracket the right way. So you make sure you have it on the one where the, the hole is furthest out. We're taking our T nut. We're going to put that on the bottom and just tighten it down. All right, let's move on to the next step. Okay, so we're looking at the back of the machine. And again, if this was on a full table, these would be sitting flush and we would just go ahead and tighten these down. But since they're not, I'm gonna have to pull them up and just tighten them in place. And just make sure that they're in where they're supposed to be on the corners. And then we'll go ahead and just tighten them in place. Again, once I get this put onto a, a table, I'll run the gantry to the back I'll loosen these up, run the gantry to the back, and make sure that they're sitting exactly where they need to be. But for now, let's go ahead and tighten these in place. Good, I'm gonna spin it around, do the same thing to the other side. All right, that looks good. Let's move on to the next step. On this step, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our stepper motors. So let's go ahead and do that now. One thing I do want to mention is just make sure that the, the small set screw is facing up. And also because we're installing the stepper this way, let's take the flat part of the shaft of the stepper motor and face it up as well. So we can align those two later. Flat part of the stepper is facing up, set screw is facing up, and it's going to go on just like this. Okay, so you can see the flat part of the shaft right here, and then we have our set screw. Let's go ahead and tighten our set screw down. And we'll spin this around. We'll tighten down the clamp screw. All right, that looks good. This is a good time to go through and just make sure your lead screw is not loose left to right here. If it is, you can take this lock collar and just tighten it back up closer to the plate here. It's also a good time to just make sure that these are tightened down on the lead screw side as well as the set screw. And just do a little bit of a maintenance while you're here. Okay, at this point, we are good with that. Stepper motor's in place. Let's go ahead and plug it back in. Also a good time to just check all of your wires that your connections are tight. You can see that there's some copper showing here from the wire. I don't like that. So I'm gonna pull all these out, snip them, and then retighten that back down. But other than that, the stepper's on and we'll move on to the next stepper. Again, make sure that you turn your lead screw till the, till the little set screw is facing up. Stepper motor, it's gonna install this way. So I wanna make sure that this Flat part of the shaft is facing up and get that started. All right, good deal. Let's go ahead and tighten down the set screws. All right, go ahead and start with the little guy. And then let's spin this to get to the clamping screw. Tighten that down and again, 
Good time to do some maintenance. Just look at the lead screw, make sure everything's nice and tight, and let's move on to the next step. All right, on this step, we're gonna go ahead and plug in our stepper motor. Again, just double check all your connections here. Again, I see copper showing here, so I'm gonna go ahead and snip those back and fix that. And I'm just gonna go through and do some wire management. Zip tie some of the, the extra cord here and just make it look nice. All right, so we've taken the extension connector off the end of the wire. We'll go ahead and pull it through the plate here. Just gonna let that hang for now. We're gonna go ahead and move the extension limit switch back and then we'll be able to find out exactly how much wire we need there and we'll wrap the rest of it up and make this look nice and neat in the back here. So let's go ahead and remove our limit switch and we'll take that and move it to the back. Okay, so we're at the back of the machine now. We're gonna measure off of this back plate from here uh, out to three inches or 75 millimeters. And we're gonna put a mark right here. So let's go ahead and do that now. Pushing up against this plate here. Just gonna put a mark at three inches. We'll do the same thing on the opposite side, on this side of it, so that's good. Okay, let's take our limit switch wire and we're just gonna feed it through this hole. All right, now that we fed it through the plate here, we're gonna go ahead and put our extension connector back on and the wire color order is black, red, blue. Go ahead and loosen those up and I've snipped these down a little bit as well. Just to make sure they, there's no copper or tin showing. I always like to tighten these down and then come back and wiggle them a little bit, make sure, and then give them one more turn or so. And then you know you're in there, that looks good. All right, on this step, we are going to get our limit switch ready to be mounted. And it's gonna be in line with our mark that we put on here, right in the center. However, because we've moved this limit switch from the front, where the plate would normally come in and hit it like that, it's in the back now, so we have to flip this over. In order to do that, we just need to take this screw out and flip it the opposite way. So we'll go ahead and do that now. I'm just gonna loosen up this T-nut. When we put this in place, which I'm gonna do right now, when that gantry cart comes in, we have a good stopping point. Go ahead and plug this in. Double check your wiring. Black, red, blue, looks good. So now we have all this extra wire left over. And again, we don't wanna cut it in case we wanna convert back and move this limit switch to the front. So your best bet, in this, bot, in this back left corner, I, I just like to keep a bundle right here. So if I ever need extra wire, I have it. So I'm gonna grab a zip tie and go ahead and bundle this together. All right, so that looks good for now. Uh, we can always come back and add more zip ties to it or whatever, but that looks good. Let's move on to the next step. All right, so you wanna grab the little 40 millimeter slot cover and you may not need to do this, but I like to tuck this under here and kind of lock it in place just for a better looking wire management. So snap it in place. This makes it look nice and neat. Okay, you wanna grab some of these rubber feet and the mounting hardware, and we're gonna line them up and center with these lines here. So let's go ahead and we'll tighten this one in place. It's like that. These are hard stops. So when the machine comes back, because we're dealing with a plasma cutter, if you have a water tray or something, we don't want the plasma cutter to cut through the water tray. So we keep a hard stop on here in case there's any kind of failure in the limit switch itself. Okay, we've moved to the other side. We're gonna go ahead and mount the hard stop to this side. Uh, it goes on the outside track here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a, another mark pulled from this side, uh, three inches out. Okay, that looks good. We'll center this up. That looks good. Let's move on. Okay, so we're gonna take the remaining two hard stops and we're gonna install them on the top up here on each side of the machine. And I'm, again, putting them on the outside track. Like you see here, and we'll just move it right up to the edge of the plate. You can kind of slide it until it stops. We do the same thing on this side and then we'll tighten them in place.
I want to go ahead and install three more of these, one for each side of the X, which will be here and on that side. And then we're going to put one on the Z because our limit switch has been raised up. We don't want it to go too far down. So we'll put a hard stop there so nothing happens. And what we're going to do is just bump them right up against this plate here. So they already have the T-nuts installed on them. You might have to back them off a little bit so they can turn, but Go ahead and uh, bump them up against that 90 degree joining plate and tighten them in place. Just like that. And then what I'll do is I'll spin the machine around so we can see how we're going to do it on the Z here. OK, so on the Z hard stop, it's going to be right around here somewhere. We're going to go ahead and jog this down so we can see really where it needs to be. Um, sometimes you can push on this and just kind of get it to go down. But the idea is you want as much travel as you can get without it hitting this other uh, wheel, without this switch hitting the other wheel. So somewhere right in there, um, set that up. And this will protect the switch if it ever does go too far. So something like that. So now it can't go any further. That looks great. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, so for this next step, you wanna go ahead and grab your wheel assemblies and they're gonna go in these outside slots, just like here, just make sure they're parallel, like we said, and also that the middle one is loose. I'm actually gonna back that off a little bit and just let it drop to the bottom and tighten the middle one in place and then go ahead and tighten these. We'll do the same thing with the other side. So on this side, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that down, but um, not all the way. I'm gonna leave this loose. Just look on the back of your plate and make sure that these other uh, wheels don't have to be turned for it to slide all the way flush to the back. So we'll leave that loose because we're gonna bring in our torch holder Slide that in place right on the V grooves of the V slot. And then I'm just going to push this over, add a little bit of a preload on there. I'm going to tighten the middle one down. And then I'll tighten these other wheels, snug those up. That looks good. Now it's tight and it should be. It should be able to hold itself up there. You don't want any movement like this or like this. No, any kind of play like that. Just want it to be nice and tight, but able to go up and down like you see here. That looks good. Let's move on to the next step. All right, on this step, you're going to want to grab your probe plate and also two six millimeter screws. It's going to go right onto the top here. So we'll just put our screws in the top and screw it in to the top of the V slot. All right, that looks great. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, on this step, you wanna grab your plasma probe limit switch as well as an open builds wrench, one of the M5 lock nuts and a ball driver. Uh, we're gonna go ahead, cause we put this on temporarily, we're gonna get rid of the T-nut and we'll take this out, washer off, we'll take the screw out. The way this is gonna sit is inside the torch holder. So one thing I suggest is that you take your screw and the lock nut, go ahead and get this started and just break the threads in because where you're gonna work with it on the limit switch plate is gonna be kind of tight. So um, it's just a good idea to get the, the nylon worked in and threaded a little bit so you don't have to try to do it while it's on the plate. It'll go much easier. And back this back out. Let's go ahead and install it on the probe plate. All right, so we're going to be installing the limit switch for the plasma probe. The way it's going to work is you're going to have the, the limit switch in here, but in between this plate and the limit switch is going to be the rubber washer. So that's going to go on the face like you see it. And then, then you'll have the screw that pushes through both of them. And then on the back, you'll have your lock nut. Okay, so it's kind of tight back there. So what you can do is take a little piece of tape, put it on the back of the wrench like that, and then put the M5 nut just like that, just so the wrench can hold it in place and you can kind of hold it back there. Then you can switch over to the open end of the wrench and work it from there. 
what we're going to do is we want, when this is at the very bottom, we want this to trigger. So this has a slot in here. So you want to push it down until it actually triggers. Every time it comes down like this, it should trigger on this wheel right here, which it is. So let's go ahead and put that, tighten that in place. Every time it comes down, you should hear it click and know that the limit switch is being triggered. All right, that looks great. Let's move on to the next step. All right, guys, so we're gonna run our probe switch for the plasma probe all the way back to the back of the machine to the black box. And we're gonna do it through the cable chain. So we're gonna need to open our cable chain. We're also gonna need our six inch or so slot cover and our three conductor 13 foot wire. And also you wanna take the extension connector off the back of the probe switch so we can screw it together. But that's what the plan is. I'm gonna go ahead and flip the machine around. I'm gonna start opening the little doors on the cable chain so we can route the wire through. Okay, so on the cable chain, you have these little doors that open up and one side is the hinge and one side is the lock that keeps it in place. And I just grab a regular flathead, put it under the lock side, which is this side on the right here, and just pop them up. They pop right out with um, just by prying it up against the one behind it. And if it does come off, no problem. You can snap them right back on. So we'll go through and we'll just open all these up. Okay, so I've opened these up all the way around to here. And I was thinking since this is a straight line, I shouldn't have any problem with running the wire through here. I'm gonna go ahead and leave those closed for now and I'll try to snake that wire through when the time comes. Let's move our attention to the cable chain on the X axis on the back now. So I'll rotate the machine around. All right, so on this one, we're gonna pop the top ones off here like we did down to this radius. And then we'll see once we get the wire through, if we can just feed it down this straight line like we're gonna do on the side here. Let's go ahead and pop all these off. All right, so I have all these open up to this point here. And again, we'll try to feed that through as we get ready to do the cabling. So let's go ahead and grab the wire now. And we're gonna start at the beginning here. Uh, I'll show you a side view, but we'll leave enough to make sure that we can get into the switch here and then we'll work our way back. Okay, so before we get started running the cable, I pulled the limit switch connector and we're just gonna go ahead and open the cages on these to make sure the wire goes in easy. So just get them all open, see there. And also, tinning on the wire comes twice as long as it really needs to be. You don't want any of this sticking out of the connector. So I'm just gonna take these snips and snip about half of this off. So you have something like that. Okay, so with the screws facing you, you want your blue, red, and black wire order just like you see here. And you can see there's nothing sticking out of the back here. That looks good. Let's go ahead and tighten those down. And again, I like to just take these, wiggle them. You can see one of them did not go in. Wiggle those around a little bit and then give them one more snug. That looks good. All right, let's move on to the next step. Okay, so for this step, we're focused on the plasma probe switch. And what we wanna do is just make sure we leave ourselves enough wire. We have this end here that has the connector we just put on and get your slot cover, put the wire in there and just set the slot cover in the slot here. It might take some doom because the wire is thick, but if you put it in the, if you put the wire in the slot cover first, it's usually easier. You can still slide it around, which is good. And then at this point, just go ahead and plug in your switch. And this will just make sure that we have enough up here. Let's go ahead and plug in our plasma torch probe. Looks just like that. You want to give yourself a little bit of slack because we're going to put a zip tie on here and we'll use that as a strain relief. And we want to grab the black jacket. We'll do that now. We're going to add a strain relief for this wire. So I just have a zip tie, I'm coming up underneath here. And then we're gonna come back through. Just like that.
All right, so before we tighten it down, I just want to make sure I have the black jacket underneath the zip tie. And I do. And that looks great. We'll just go ahead and snip this off now. And that's that. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, we have our probe limit switch plugged in. Everything looks good there. We're gonna go ahead and start running the wire. So I'm gonna spin the machine around to the back. To save myself trying to work through this corrugated tubing, I'm gonna go ahead and just take this screw out. It should let me move this around a little bit so I can kind of feed this wire through it. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, and now we just want to work our wire through this corrugated tubing, come out of the bottom here, just pull it all out as much as you can there, and we'll work our way around eventually. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and feed this through the corrugated tubing. I'm gonna twist these wires together. Hopefully that'll help it get through a little easier. If you can't feed it through like this, uh, you know, it has a slit in it, so you can always open it up and kind of Mess with it that way. Oh, I feel like I'm right at the end. Yeah, I can see the wires here. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and feed this all the way through. I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect this before I pull the rest of it through, just so we know everything is good. Okay, that part's done. Our next one is to feed through here. Go ahead and do that now. And I'm gonna go ahead and snap all these back down. At this point, we can try to feed through. I don't want it to back out of here. Okay, I'll leave these open. And then I'm just gonna try to feed this straight through the entire uh, chain. I'm just feeding it through and kind of twisting it if it gets stuck. And that seems to be working well. Go ahead and snap these back in place. That looks good. I'll spin the machine around and we'll go ahead and work on the side cable chain. Okay, so let's go ahead and feed our wire through the start of this cable chain. Okay, that looks good. For this demonstration, we have our black box mounted to the back of the machine. Uh, obviously, we're building a plasma cutter. Could possibly have a water table if you choose to grab one. Um, so there will be splashing. You don't really want your black box here. We have plenty of extra cable that you can move the black box wherever you want. You can mount it on the wall, mount it somewhere just out of the way of the splashing water, sparks and things like that. So for demonstration purposes, we're gonna hook it up here. But in reality, when you go to do yours, you're gonna to wanna to get like a waterproof project box or something like that, mount it or move it off the machine completely. Um, just a, a quick tip on that. Also, this last probe switch wire that we're running, it's gonna attach right here into the probe input. Instead of trying to fish it through this corrugated tubing, we're gonna go ahead and just run it alongside of the corrugated tubing and zip tie it right to it. It'll be a lot quicker. It'll get us up and running right away. So let's go ahead and do that now. And like I said, we'll just run it right alongside of it. I actually think a good idea would be to just kind of get a general area down here where you want it, because we can always wind this side up with the rest of the wire. Go ahead and put our end connector on now, and then we'll plug it in and know exactly how much slack we need so we can wrap up the rest down here. So let's do that. Okay, I've already opened up the cages here in the connector. And we want to make sure with the screws facing us, we want black, red, blue, just like you see here. Go ahead and tighten that up. Wiggle it around a little bit and then give it a couple more turns. Snug it in place. Okay, that's what you're looking for right there. All right, we'll go ahead and plug this into the probe. And then we'll make our first zip tie right here uh, and that'll tell us where we need to go. I think I'm gonna hide this a little bit underneath, so I'm gonna run these like this. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of slack, something like that, and then we'll work our way back. Got one in the middle here. Over here. 
really only have like a little bit left over not a lot so that looks good there i've got this little stud here for the cable chain and i'm gonna just take some of this wire rework it wrap it up and just make it look a little nicer and neater um, but other than that we are good to go i'm gonna snip these off of the zip ties and move on to the next step all right, so we've done our wire management. This looks really good. I also ran an extra LED wire that's gonna go down to the power supply. Again, this is for demonstration purposes for this particular build, but you guys do it the way you wanna do it. Just make sure you get that black box protected away from any kind of water or splashing. Uh, other than that, we're good to go. Our, our probe is plugged in. So let's move on to the next step. All right, guys, so for this step, we're gonna go ahead and install our slat holders and our slats as well. Now we're gonna be mounting this onto the frame. We're gonna use six millimeter M5 screws, three of them here. You notice the slat holders have little slots here so you can mount right to the V slot. So I was gonna mount one right here on the front, like you see here, and then we'll go ahead and mount one to the back here and we'll install the slat. So you're gonna need six of the M5 by six millimeter low profile screws, and you're also gonna need six drop-in T-nuts. So let's grab those now. Again, we're just gonna put three of the screws in here with the drop-in T-nuts. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're just gonna do them by hand first. I'm just gonna line them up with the slot here, turn them in the right direction, and put them down there. Okay, it looks good. Center it up a little bit. I'm just gonna center this here best I can, and I'm also making it flush on the front. You can move this anywhere you want, but this is where I would put it. How you doing? That looks good. We'll also install the one in the back. Now we just put our slats in. They just live in the slot just like this. I just bring them up to the front here so they're even and I can get close to the edge when I'm putting the metal on here. It's a lot easier than trying to reach over. This is, this is the spoiler board for the plasma cutter. This is a consumable, so you do have to replace these. You can see that the plasma will cut into them. So over time, you may need to replace them. But I've already done a lot of cutting on these guys. All right, that looks great. Let's move on to the next step. So I wanna to mention to you guys that this is without a water table. So the sparks would fly straight through. You can cut like this, or if you have a water table, you would just unbolt these slats and they would just sit inside the water table. I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the water table. I'm also gonna have the machine over on a expanded metal table that we made out of the 1010 series tables. We put expanded steel on it. And so I'm gonna set the whole thing up on there, bring in the plasma cutter, the air compressor, all on a little mobile uh, unit that is our table that we can roll around. And it's really a cool setup. So that's what we'll start in the next shot. And again, these will just be sitting inside of the water table. So let's move on to that step now. We have the whole setup. We wanted to show you what it looks like. We have the plasma cutter underneath, the air compressor. Everything's hooked up. This is what your machine is going to look like. After you're done these next few steps, your machine will be up and running. All right, guys, so this is the plasma cutter we chose. It's a Hynade Cut 60 DN. And we chose this because it is a non-high frequency blowback, no touch, torch this is what you want if you're going to be using this setup that we have uh, it works really well and i'm just going to go over a few of the things that it comes with it comes with this handheld torch which is nice but it's kind of ugly when it's in the holder so the version that i got actually came with a straight torch as well and that's the one i'll be using on this build it also comes with a 110 to 220 conversion plug i'll also be using the 220 plug so we'll plug that in and it also comes with the grounding clamp that you clamp to the workpiece while you're cutting it. So we'll go through and we'll just start hooking up all the things that go onto the plasma cutter and then we'll get it ready to hook to the air compressor. All right guys, so this is the straight torch I'm gonna be using. It's the IPTM60 and how you hook it up is pretty straightforward. 
comes with this plastic cap to protect the ends and you just put it in here and then you turn this to secure it and you're good to go. Let's move on to the next. All right, so for the next one, we're gonna hook up our grounding cable and you can see what it looks like here. This literally just goes in like this. Gotta find what position it needs to be in and then you kind of turn it one turn to lock it. We're good there. Okay, so next we'll hook up our air hose. It'll go from the compressor to the plasma and that just connects to the quick disconnect here. This is a little hose that's only about three feet because where we have this set up, the, the plasma and the air compressor are really close to each other. So that'll work out good. Now we need to hook up the trigger switch. This is the cable that hooks up to the plasma and then hooks into the black box. And the black box can trigger the plasma to turn on and off when it needs to do a cut. So they give you, when you buy a straight torch, you get a long cable like this that plugs into the back of the plasma cutter right here where it says control signal. It just, it can only fit one way. It has kind of a keyed lock on it. And then you just tighten that in place with the screw. That's good. And then as you can see on this end, we have a two way extension connector and this will plug right into the relay of the black box. All right, and that concludes hooking everything up that we need to hook up at this point. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right guys, so we've gone ahead and moved our air compressor and plasma cutter onto the bottom shelf here. And on this next few steps, we're gonna go through and just hook everything up to the machine and we'll show you how to do it. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so first thing we're gonna hook up is the air compressor. We already have it in the back of the plasma and I've got this short hose, like I mentioned, I'm just going to run it right into the air compressor. Not sure what air compressor you guys will have, but it's as simple as that. I will mention it real quick that we're not using the gauges on the air compressor itself. We're going to end up using the gauge on the plasma and that will give us a true measurement of the air coming out of the tip of the torch. And we'll get into that on our first cut. But for now, let's move on to hooking up the next thing. Okay guys, so next we're going to hook up the plasma torch. And I'm just gonna thread this around and come up the back of the table and then we'll go up top and we'll hook it in place. Let's do that now. Okay, so we're just gonna lower this down into the torch holder. And I have mine like right about here, just, a, just so you have enough so the tip is, is uh, out here and it can touch. We'll secure that. And then you wanna grab the big zip tie and I put a little bit of a loop here. Go around your stepper motor. So we're, we're putting enough of a loop to make sure that we have enough Z axis clearance, um, which there's plenty in this run. But if you, if you're not sure, you can always jog this down, but remember it's going to hit the top of the table. So that's all you really need a little bit. And that looks good. I'm going to snip this off and we will move on to the next step. Okay. So next we're going to take our grounding clamp and we're going to loop this back around like we did with the plasma torch. And we're just going to clamp it out of the way for now. And then when we go to do our first cut, we will need it again. So let's go ahead and loop this around and under. Okay. So we pulled it through. We're just going to clamp it here out of the way for now and move on to the next step. Okay. So now we're going to take our plasma trigger wire and we're gonna go run this to the black box in the back. This is gonna plug right into the relay of the black box. Okay, so we're gonna take our plasma trigger and we're just gonna run it into our enclosure here where we have the black box. Let's stuff that in there. And then I'm gonna take some slot covers and I'm just gonna run this in the track so we can make a nice neat wiring job. We'll go ahead and just push that in now. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up the electronics enclosure box. And we have our cable here. If you look underneath the USB, there's a port called relay, and that's what you want to plug into. That's our switch to trigger our plasma on and off. Okay, we're in, that looks good. Next thing we're going to do is plug in our USB so we can control the black box with our laptop. So I'm just pulling that in and it's right on top of where we just plugged in the relay for the plasma torch trigger. I'm gonna just curl this up and set it up here to the side until we get ready. That looks good. Let's move on to the next step. All right guys, so we wanted to share this electronics box that we put on the back of the plasma. Again, just wanna reiterate, it's super important because water splashes out of the tray if you have the water tray on there. And of course, sparks and dust can fly out. So really wanna protect our electronics. So we found this on Amazon, just went through. Um, there's different size ones you can get but we just went through and mounted the power supply and then took some Velcro and mounted on the black box. 
And then we have some rubber grommets for all of the inputs and the outputs that need to go in here. We're gonna drill some air holes in the bottom so it can breathe and we'll put something there to block any dust that could get in. But it, this is really cheap and a great way to make sure that you protect your electronics. All right guys, we're all set up, ready to go. At this point, we are ready to do our first cut. So on the next video, we'll jump into doing the first cut and getting your machine working and dialed in. All right, so thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.